Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Pojo with Eternal Brews. Uh, we're trying a different list today on Fun Stable Sindok, which uh, has been mostly inspired by the uh, existence of Crown of Possibilities good stuff decks in uh, sort of Film and Elysian. Um, I really thought that was kind of interesting, so I wanted to try a little bit of that. And we're adding in, of course, the new Horus Traverse card, Crimson Fire Maw, which belongs in Fun Stable Sindok like it belongs in almost none other. So. Uh, if you don't know what Fun Stable Sindok is, uh, I have a video up on it already, but uh, we can discuss the changes that I've made a little bit. So what we do here is we are playing the card Ageless Mentor to give a bunch of units in our hand the cost four or more, plus two, plus two. That means that we can basically have access to Soulfire Drakes that deal seven damage, and a bunch of other cards like Alpine Tracker and Crimson Fire Maw that have flying and are really aggressive and are very, very good when given very, very large stats. In addition, we also play Northwind Herald, a card that benefits both from the Ageless Mentor package and from the package of Unstable Form, which we'll talk about a little bit more later. But the basic idea is that turning a zero-cost card like Northwind Herald into a seven-drop on the following turn can be very, very powerful. With all of this, we tend to do enough damage to summon out Sindok Rage Incarnate, a 7-4, who costs one less for each damage the enemy player has taken this turn, which means that we really, really get a good leg up whenever we get any amount of aggro in. This deck's very swingy. It, it either wins or it loses in spectacular fashion, but I think it does usually win more than it loses and is a pretty fun, fairly competitive deck. So a lot of fun to play around with. I don't know... We're testing out the Crown of Possibilities now. It's been pretty good so far, but uh, I, I can't guarantee that this is the best iteration of the deck. And if you don't like the Crown, you can certainly swap in Hunting Terriax, which I think is a really, really good card for the ambush setups. And uh, Shogun of the Wastes was another card that I used previously in this deck because I really liked putting double damage on ambush units. So that was like kind of the trick that we swapped out for the Crown of Possibilities and for an Infinite Hourglass, which I have found to be pretty useful. Okay. So, because this deck is big stuff, I am running one infinite hourglass now, and I found that to be really interesting. Like, I think that because you are generating very, very large units, one of the most common answers to large units is permafrost, so blanking those means that they just have less removal to deal with your big stuff, and since your deck is all big stuff, that means that you will typically get more big stuff across in the late game. That's important, but it's also important to be able to attack just basically endlessly with cards like Soulfire Drake, and then have them on defense to give other decks cards in your deck flying or charge. Remember that most of the cards in your deck already have flying, so they will get charge as a result of Soulfire Drake dying. That is so beneficial if you are playing Ageless Mentor, because Ageless Mentor plus charge is just a really devastating combination. And like it's a pretty good thing to be setting up, so we like that a lot. The other one of is Granite Ring, a card that I find really useful in Omens and gives you that plus one and Overwhelm that will allow you to push damage across with these big units and basically just get you to a position of strength from three. So it's a good thing to be playing on three if you don't have other options, and it'll allow you to push across damage that you wouldn't otherwise be able to push across, which will usually allow you to play Sindok. So I like that card quite a bit. Uh, it's not a four of in this deck for sure, but it's a useful one of to make sure that you can push damage for lethal or for Sindok, which is always nice. Okay, beyond that, there is one other trick here. Ageless Mentor plus... Oh, there's actually two others. We have Twinning Ritual, which uh, doubles up Northwind Heralds and also activates them, meaning that you get to play larger Northwind Heralds and more of them. Uh, this is important because, of course, Northwind Heralds are extremely threatening if played early. They can turn into seven drops very quickly, and seven drops will very typically just wreck your opponent's day. There's one seven drop that isn't very good right now, the Topaz Drake, a 5-3. Uh, I think you might actually be able to get Hibernate behemoth as well so omens has not really been super kind to northwind herald but it's still an extremely strong card that often hits ikaria uh night maw the venom spine hydra the stone scar leviathan there are a ton of things that northwind herald hits that are really really dangerous for your opponent and can be brought out as soon as soon as turn two or three so we run that out quite a bit the other thing is that if you're up against a control matchup and you manage to stick a Sindok, Sindok turns into a Scourge of Frost Home when Unstable formed, the only card at 10, which means that he can lock down your opponent's entire cast of spells and turn into an 8-8 Dinosaur. That's not a bad deal, and it's pretty worth it against some control decks. So a minor trick, but one that's usually worth it on very specific matchups if you manage to stick a Sindok for longer than one turn. 
So that's all of the basic interactions of the deck. Uh, you'll find that it's a lot of fun to play. Crown of Possibilities adds a lot of like shenanigans to the deck in general, but it's also a deck that just swings in with big flyers, and big flyers are a really satisfying Timmy experience. If you like big dragons, this is a good deck for you. So uh, let's go ahead and show it off, and we'll get some big dragon fun happening as fast as we possibly can. See you guys soon. All right, we're up against Phoenix 397. Uh, this opener is really strong. It's got the Ageless Mentor. It has Crimson Fire Maw. Like, there's a lot to like about this hand. The one thing I don't have here is time. And that's very risky because we do want to have time. Levitate gets me an extra chance to draw it. Crimson Fire Maw will play even if I don't get time. I think I keep this hand. The benefits outweigh the cost if I get the time. And there's a lot of ways that I can get the time, so I think we'll have a decent shot at it at least. Eat ourselves a Horus Trapper or something. All right, Phoenix three nine seven going for Rokano Artisan. That means that I can levitate here, which is something I definitely want to do. Primal's not the card I'm looking for. Levitate again. Found our time. So now I can Ageless Mentor, then Twinning Ritual, the Crimson Fire Maw, or I can Twinning Ritual, the Crimson Fire Maw, and then Ageless Mentor. You know, ordering is sort of up to me. I think it's better to Twinning Ritual first, since that gives me the option to play the Crimson Fire Maw next turn if I need to. Uh, also, having a 6-5 against an Armory-type deck might be a good idea. We'll find out. Fire Sigil there. Found another Ageless Mentor, sure. Go ahead and play a power here. And next turn, do I want to play another power? I think I do. Just being bigger than my opponent is going to be such a big deal. Possible I want to play one Crimson Fire Monster. Time to reflect. Back for two. And this is getting to be a bit interesting. We'll pull some more power out of our deck, and Crimson Fire Maw will set us up for the next couple of turns. Fire Maw is probably one of the worst targets for Ageless Mentor, amusingly enough, in this deck. It's a cheap card that's pretty easy to play, but beyond that, it doesn't do a heck of a lot. I will go ahead and... Oh man, Crowd of Possibilities is pretty tempting. I'm going to attack for four here. Then we will go ahead and play that Fire Maw. That crown's really tempting. Nah, it's gotta be Fire Maw. We'll see what he's got. <laughs> it's a good noise, Fire Maw. Alright, there's our first Vanquish. But it means he's not playing a weapon this turn, like a Star Steel Dasha. So any turn that we do that, it's gonna be good for us. Granite Ring gives me a decent amount of aggression, which I kinda love. Like, I can just push 6 damage here without anything, and that would probably force him to start responding with something like a, you know, harsh roll. But we'll see how it goes. 2-1 there. We didn't end up playing crown twice in a row, which is not something I love, but I will go ahead and... Ooh, do we want to attack here? Yeah, I'm going to attack here and play crown. The longer he leaves these alive, the more they're going to plague him. I will not play Crimson Fire Maw into a harsh rule. We will resist the temptation. Because I have enough damage to kill him with Torch, so... Okay, Wisdom of the Elders. He might actually be stuck on the harsh rule. He hasn't played Justice yet, but he also could be faking it. Looks like he found the Justice. But he can't really kill these two threes, so the Granite Ring's gonna do the job. Halt! Alright, now I have to decide whether I'm going to Torch or not here. Torching gets me 5 damage in. And I really want to see that harsh roll. So we'll do it. At this point, not playing Crimson Fire Maw feels a little greedy, but I think I can force him to Harsh Rule still. Yeah, gonna attack in. 
We're gonna see the rule. This ends now. And I still got Soulfire Drakes and Torches in the deck. I've got Alpine Tracker, which is instant lethal. There's a lot of things I can draw. Play all that. The depleted fire sigils not necessary to play. I'll just leave it as a trick. It's quite possible he knows about it, but I'm guessing he didn't keep track. So we've got our 9-8 Fire Maw. That can get overwhelmed. So Flyers won't block it. Not even a Karia. We will eat a Karia alive. I don't know that he has an answer here. He's struggling pretty hard. It's very hard for armory decks to beat cards this size without Harsh Rule or Vanquish, and we've seen one of both. So there's a chance he has the second one, in which case we're going to be in some trouble, but we'll see. Rise up or be cut down. All right, so Sindok with Killer kills Akaria, which is pretty cool, but I think just the main thing I need to do here is Granite Ring. Swing for 10. And with the overwhelm, that's enough to kill him. So I got that granite ring value. It is a meaningful one-up in this deck sometimes. Always like to see it. All right, for our opener, we have Twinning Ritual and Levitate. I kind of love it, but I really... Generally, we want to aggressively mull for one of our three drops. Uh, in this situation, we just didn't have enough to play any of the other cards, so it didn't really work out very well. Didn't find the three drops, that's usually a sign of a rough start to the game, but uh, we might end up getting something good sometime soon, so definitely hold out. We'll see exactly what ends up happening. Seed of Wisdom here or Seed of Fury, either one's pretty good. I want to make sure that I have double blue and double red by the time that I reach turn four, since that is the Alpine Tracker turn, and that can be very good for anti-aggro. I like Alpine Tracker in this deck a lot, specifically to deal Safe with travels, basically this Praxis setup, where you have Temple Scribes and Amber Acolytes. This is getting more popular than ever, and the more options you have against it, the better off you are. There's our Alpine Tracker. Probably see some Temple Scribes or Amber Acolytes soon, so Alpine Tracker should do a good job. Discovery right. for the ages. Diogo's not my favorite thing to see here, but I'm happy to just play off my tracker. Hit him in the face. And be pretty happy with that result. Combined with a Skycrag banner and a Soulfire Drake, I almost have enough to play Sindok, but not in this turn. Next turn, maybe. If he wants to try and block, I can unstable for him, and that will be pretty good as well. You cannot put out the light. Ooh, another Alpine Tracker would be extremely strong here, but unfortunately it is not to be. Instead, I will unstable form this guy. You've run far. Found myself an Iron Thorn, which I think is just amazing here. That allows me to play Soulfire Drake this turn if I so choose. Or I can Twinning Ritual Soulfire Drake, play the Unstable Forms again. Uh, it's all looking pretty good for me. I think we'll get the Soulfire Drake a second copy and we'll really consider going up to 6 or 7 or 8. Uh, I'm not sure if there's anything better than Iron Thorn at the current setup, just because I really need power, so Iron Thorn does a good job here. He also defends my butt a little bit, which is always nice. We could, however, have unstabled this into a 4-drop. It's unlikely to become a Sandstorm Titan, and Iron Thorn can block almost everything else. Fire. Worth considering, didn't end up being a thing. There's my second Alpine Tracker. Gosh, am I happy to see it that card right now. Here. Unstable forming it will get us a 7-7, seven, seven, which also locks down the Dawnwalkers. I will go ahead and stay defensive this turn, and we will probably end our turn now. Now, I'm getting pretty close to the offense I need, but I'm also dead to Obliterate, so that's rough. Friendly Wisp is a card. Yay! Shattered Glass Mage is also a card. Both are pretty scary. 
What we want to do here is we want to unstable form the 1-1 one, one into something that doesn't block for us in the air cannot. so that we can play Soulfire Drake. Attack for 6. Follow up with Sindok. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way, but it would have been nice if it did. <laughs> I'm dead to uh, Torch now. Don't love that. Uh, I'm dead to a couple of other things, but nonetheless, getting the flyer out of the air was definitely a good idea for me. Hero of the People could be pretty ugly. It's probably not going to be too big, but I'm worried it's going to get two skills, which will be enough. I can Ageless Mentor here and get a good Sindok off, which is very, very useful. Reality Warden still holding the Dawnwalkers back. That's exactly three damage. Giving my own units endurance is a very, very good deal for me. Um, let's go ahead and play the Ageless Time Mentor. Unstable form. Stormcaller kills that, which is nice. And then I also have a chump blocker with it. We'll attack for seven. Oh, I could have played Sindok there. Uh, it's a it's a knight. That would have been a very good idea. Um, but I think we'll be okay. Diogo's gonna get his double damage charge ability this turn if he so chooses, but Soulfire Drake kills him, so I'm not too worried about double damage charge at the moment. Um, if he does double damage charge, I just block with Stormcaller. I see no reason to risk the Friendly Wisp. Okay, he's just gonna try and draw some cards. That's also a pretty good plan. Uh, Stormcaller kills the 1-1, one, one, Soulfire Drake wins the game, so I think that's gonna be the route I go for. Especially since it's pretty hard to kill Soulfire Drake without uh, its two torches to do it. That should work out fine. And there we go. Despite not playing the Sindok, uh, a very, very good game. And some good unstable forms out of that one. Here we are up against Puli. Uh, this hand's not any good. We need to find the Crown of Possibilities. So, ah, found it. That's good. Ageless Mentor would have been acceptable as well. Seed of Fury, Seed of Impulse, I will go ahead and just play out. I did not find a third power, which is something that's going to be pretty crucial. So we need to find that as soon as possible, or else it's going to get a little bit tricky in here. Uh, once I find it, I will be able to Twinning Ritual Northwind Herald or something else, which would be also good. You got a problem? Okay, found it. Good. So we end our turn, and I think we crown a Possibilities first, because that's just uh, going to lead to some pretty useful benefits. My opponent's playing Minotaurs. It's a tricky deck to beat. Jack's Knife is a weird one. Certainly very aggressive. I will go ahead and seek power here. We need a third red. And once we get it, I can play Crown. It would also be okay to Twinning Ritual Northwind Herald and get two 4-4s. Four um, I think with the Unstable Forms, that's actually worth doing. And it might be better than the, uh, the Crown storm, here, the just depending on what kind of removal he's got. And my turn. So next turn, the Northwind Heralds go back up to six. And I take six here. That part's pretty much unquestionable. We unstable form this. We get a five six to defend with, which is a pretty good deal. Let's hope there's no extra slay, because that would be pretty rough. That's a pretty rough day. Crimson Fire Maw has charge, but we're actually going to use him on defense, since we're just getting wrecked here. He's got another Slay, I'm very sad, but I'm guessing we might actually be safe this turn. That would be particularly nice. Alright, finally get rid of this guy. Good stuff. You won't live to regret or if Vigilante dies to... Alpine Tracker. It ends here. We can unstable form Alpine Tracker. It will still have charge, whatever it is that we turn it into. Tavrod. 
Oh, pearlescent drake, I'll take it. All right, a six of three attacker is a pretty good thing to be having right now. And my opponent appears to be out of tricks. So we'll go ahead and grab a primal. We will play Soulfire Drake. We'll swing for 11. And we seem to have stabilized quite well. There's still the possibility that I find 6 damage somewhere, but I don't think he can actually block 2 flyers in Argentport. So, we've got him. Alright, that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will be back with more stuff very, very soon. I've been trying to put up as many brews as possible in the wake of Horus Travers, and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying them. This one is a lot of fun, of course, and uh, I, I do really like this deck, so I wanted to post the update since we haven't updated it since, I think, pre-Omens. So really, really nice to have it out, and... Uh, oh, well, no, it would be post-Omens. Sindok is an Omens card. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been a while, and uh, this deck is uh, real fun to play with, so... I hope you guys liked it, and I will be back with more stuff soon. Have a really good night, everyone.